Will women rally around the flag, the Democratic flag? Let's play hardball. Good evening, I'm Chris Matthews. Welcome to Harbaugh. Does Barack Obama have a problem with women? He lost women overwhelmingly to Hillary Clinton, and a brand new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows that he still has a lot of work to do against John McCain with a key group, suburban women. The poll found that while Hillary Clinton would beat John McCain among suburban women by 14 points, look at this difference, Barack Obama loses among that group to McCain by six points, a 20-point difference. She wins by 14, he loses by six. With an election this close, those suburban women may be absolutely critical to deciding who wins and who loses in November. In just a moment, we'll be joined by three powerful, high-profile, politically active women who may have a big say in how women vote in the fall. Okay, again. Now, tracking poll of women shows that Obama has widened his lead over McCain from five points last week to 13 points this week. So your thought, Emily, about this whole feeling thing. I'm trying to get, I believe there's a swirl in American policy right now of attitude, of feelings. It's very unsettled. That's my view. Well, the primary just ended last week. And certainly those who worked so hard for uh, Senator Clinton are had taken a tough loss. They're moving through it. But, you know, there was a Gallup poll out this morning that shows Barack Obama has jumped, uh, you know, 13 points from where he was uh, among women. And I think, again, as the clear picture of the choice between Senator Obama and Senator McCain comes into focus for all women. Uh, Senator McCain has very little to say to them. You know, how are we going to get our kids out of Iraq? What are we going to do about health care? Cecile's talked about uh, women's health issues. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, positive things that McCain can say to win these women over, and they've always been a battleground in the general election. Let me ask you about this, because in every ethnic group, I don't even like the race term race mm -hmm. because we're all the same race, but in every ethnic group and every uh, m gender female, uh, female male, there's this tremendous age thing that's going on. We looked at every night we covered an election primary, we'd look at the breakout, and if it was 60, if anybody under 30 voted for Barack Obama, the majority, then we figured he lost. It was about 45 he carried, he won. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. As it moved up. But, but is this among activist women, feminists, is, there seemed to be a break there, too, on age. Well, certainly Barack Obama had a tremendous appeal to young people of all stripes. Right. And that is something to be celebrated. And I think, you know, Senator Clinton brought millions of new women into this process, women who had never voted before, women who had waited their whole lives to see uh, a woman run for president. And frankly, there's not... Uh, there weren't a huge number of differences on major policy issues between the two candidates. And the fact that they each brought different constituencies yeah. to the table, I think, bodes well for Democrats in the fall as we move forward, because now it's time to come together. And, you know, certainly a case needs to be made by Senator Obama to these women to bring them on board. He's taken important steps to do that. He's going to do that. Mm -hmm. And Hillary Clinton, it should be said, is going to play a major role in this general okay. election to bring these people around. I want to come back to a hot issue, I think for all of you, and that is this issue of abortion rights, reproductive rights. I have a sense that younger women, and I'll make a, ju a judgment here because I think younger people generally, don't know what it was like to have abortion outlawed, punishable for doctors and everybody, uh, criminalized if you will. They don't know what it was like and therefore their sensitivity on this issue, younger people may not be as extreme as women who have a memory at least of what it was like. We'll be right back with Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, Cecile Richards and Ellen Moran to talk about how this abortion rights issue may be breaking for Barack Obama and against John McCain as people become more aware of where McCain stands on Roe v. Wade. He wants to get rid of it. Amazing new number came out today. Planned Parenthood uh, commissioned this poll by Peter Hart, the much respected Democratic pollster who also is part of the Wall Street Journal NBC poll operation that says that 50 percent of American women voters today in key battleground states don't know John McCain's position on abortion rights. In fact, 36 percent, more than a third of pro-choice McCain voters are less likely to vote for him once they figure out that he wants to get rid of Roe v. Wade. Ellen? 
Yes. This is a lot of a lack of information. It seems to be important to this election. It could hurt McCain. Well, sure. We're just a week into the general election, and the case hasn't been made for these two candidates. Elections are about choices, and I think, you know, certainly Senator Obama's campaign has a lot of work to do in framing that choice. All of the allied forces, the groups that work on these issues, need to make the case to these women voters because there is a lack of information out there. And once this information comes to light, uh, it's going to be very really bad news for Senator McCain. I ask you, uh, Cecile, this whole question. Are you yes. amazed at the, that many? I was looking at the poll results as we covered the Florida primary for right. the Republicans. So many pro-choice Republican voters, women, I guess, voted for McCain. How do you explain it? Right. Right. I think it's you pointed. This is a very important point, Chris. First, we know from the Planned Parenthood poll that you just mentioned, half of McCain's women supporters are pro-choice and they have no idea where he is on these issues. But it's not simply that he wants to actually overturn Roe, that he has stated he wants to overturn Roe. It's that he's voted against every women's health issue that we've ever worked on, affordable family planning, cancer screening for low-income women, and on and on and on. And I think actually I find all across the country, women are really surprised and really dismayed to find out that a candidate who they thought of as a maverick is so out of touch with women's health care needs in this country. I think it's going to be a huge problem for him, and I really think that's why women voters, when they learn more about John McCain, they're going to simply say, "This is a risk we can't take," uh, and, and I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a problem. Alan, well, I'm building on what the other panelists have said, look, this is a whole package that uh, is going to be exposed for women voters. And it's, not, it's women's health care, but this is a guy who also voted against reauthorizing S-CHIP. This is a guy whose health care plan takes it away from em the employer-based system that's working for a number of Americans mm -hmm. now. And, What's uh, S-CHIP? S-CHIP is the Children's Health Insurance Initiative okay. that allows kids to get health care uh, who are in low-income families. A lot of kids, millions of kids get That was a big fight two or three months ago. Huge right. fight on the Hill. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, this is a whole package and, you know, it's really... S-CHIP finally got vetoed, didn't it? Yes. And did it get overridden? No. Okay, it's dead. Okay, thank you. This time. Anyway, Kathleen Kennedy Townsend, Cecile Richards, Ellen Moran, up next.